everyone, my name is Anangha and I'm part of the data science discovery team and in this video today we're going to be doing a question on uh, like conditional probability and specifically having COVID. So let's go ahead and get started. So here it says that suppose 35% of people test positive for COVID, right? If a person tests positive, they uh, have a 75% probability of actually having COVID, right? If a person tests negative, they have a 20% probability to actually have COVID. So this is um, in involving Bayes' theorem, right? As we're going to be dealing with these different types of questions, like what is the probability of having COVID, right? Um, and it says here, what is the probability that a person who has COVID tests positive, right? So these are these different types of questions. Some of them we can answer pretty easily, right? Some of them we may have to use some formulas or either create a table. So it says here, first of all, like what is the probability that a, the student actually has COVID, right? And we are given the, the results for testing, right? But we're not given the results of actually having COVID. So that's something that we're going to have to find out. And, you know, the, the way I, that I like to do this is actually creating a sort of probability table to kind of organize these probabilities, right? So I'm going to be creating uh, sort of this table, right, which has these, um, these totals here. So first I have COVID, right, and then I have not COVID, and then I'm going to have um, testing positive and then testing negative and then I also want to include my marginal counts which are going to be my totals right so that's basically going to be my table and um, yeah if, if you want you can add you know lines or whatever that doesn't matter right so it says here suppose 35% of people test positive for COVID right so this means that out of my total people and and you can make you can choose any number to be the total that you're dealing with here right so you can choose maybe like having a thousand people in your population or a hundred i'll just be dealing with let's say having 100 people and then basically converting these probability statements into my table here so that's how it's going to be like so if i have a hundred total people this means that 35% of the people test positive for COVID, right? So if I have 100 people, 35% of them will test positive, will test positive for COVID. So this total right here is basically going to be 35 because out of these 100 people, 35 will test positive for COVID, which means that 65 will test negative, right? Um, and then here it says if a person tests positive, they have a 75% probability that they actually have COVID, right? So here if a person tests positive, right, so given that this person tested positive, out of these 35 people who've tested positive, 75% of them actually have COVID, right? So 75% of these people who tested positive, out of these 35 people who tested positive, actually have COVID. So it's just going to be 0.75 times 35, which is going to be basically 26.25. And so this means that 75% of the people who, um, you know, given that this person tested positive, out of these 35 people who tested positive, 75% of them have COVID, which means that 35 minus 26.25, this right here is going to be 8.75, right? Because this should total up to 35. And then it says here, if a person tests negative, right? So if a person out of these 65 people who tested negative, they have a 20% probability of actually of actually having COVID, right? So 20% basically of these 65 people, which is 13, 13 of them have COVID. So out of these 65 people, 20% of them or 13 of them actually have COVID. And then here you can kind of just find uh, this probability, which is going to be 52. And then you can look at these totals here. So which is going to be 26.25 plus 13, which is just 39.25. And then here is just going to be 60 point seven five. Okay, so, and then you wanna make sure that this adds up to 100, 
which is does which it does and then this adds up to 100 right so now we have all these probabilities down in our table right so it's a lot easier to solve any sort of you know question that we're given so the first question is a random person is selected what is the probability that the student actually has COVID so we're looking at the probability of like out of all of the people, how many actually have COVID, which is going to be 39.25. But remember it's asking, so I just wanna write here, probability of having COVID. It's just going to be, um, you don't wanna look at the totals, right? You wanna look at the actual probabilities. So it's going to be 39.25 out of my total 100 people. So it's going to be 0 0.3925, which is actually going to be the decimal value that I'm going to be dealing with, right? So out of these 100 total people, 39.25 have COVID, so it's just going to be 0 0.3925 as we want to express our answer as a decimal, right? And then here, what is the probability that a person who has COVID tests positive, right? So given the person has COVID, right, given that they have COVID, that's what goes in their given statement, what is the probability that that person who has COVID, given that they have COVID, uh, tests positive? Right, so what is the probability that, you know, given a person has COVID, that they test positive? So that's how the statement is worded. So it's going to be prob probability of positive given COVID. So here, kind of the total will be different, right? We're not going to be looking at the 100 anymore. We're going to be looking at the people who have COVID, right? Because given this person has COVID, uh, we're going to be looking at basically this statement right here, this row. Given the person has COVID, which is 39.25, right? 25. What is the probability that um, the test result was positive? So out of those 39 people, 26.25 uh, of those had a positive test result. 0.25. And then you just want to go ahead and express the answer as a decimal. So it's going to be 0 0.6687898. Or you can just write it as a fraction. So 26.25 divided by 39.25, which is this. And then what is the probability that a person who has COVID tests negative? So given that the person has COVID, right, what is the probability that they test negative? So it's probably test negative given COVID negative given COVID. So again, you're looking at the same, the same row, the same subset of the population, right? So given out of the 39.25 people who have COVID, 13 of them tested negative. So that's going to be your final answer here. 13 out of 39.25. And then finally, uh, or I guess we have two more. What is the probability a student who does not have COVID tests positive, right? So given that the student does not have COVID, given that they do not have COVID, what is the probability that they test positive? So it's probably a positive, positive given not COVID. And here we're looking at a different subset of the population, right? We're not going to be looking at this row. We're actually going to be looking at the people who don't have COVID, right? So it's going to be this row basically here. So out of the uh, 60.75 people who don't have COVID, 8.75 of them got a positive test result. So my answer is just going to be 8.75 divided by 60.75. Out of the 60.75 people who do not have COVID, 8.75 of them um, got a positive test result. And then finally, what is the probability that a student who does not have COVID tests negative? So given that the student does not have COVID, the probability that they test negative um, is, so probability of negative given that they do not have COVID is going to be, and again, we're going to be looking at this subset right here, the, um, the people who do not have COVID, right? So out of the total 60.75 people who do not have COVID, 52 of them tested negative. So that's going to be our final probability. And that's correct. So 
um, you know, as you can see with the table, it's, it's pretty easy to find the total probabilities. You just have to be careful of what the like what subset of the total that you're dealing with here, right? And and if you're dealing with you know a final total where where there's no condition involved, right? So you want to make sure that you organize those correctly. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you next time. Bye.